Okay, so shall we start now? Okay, so I'll... Okay, uh, hello everyone. So welcome to the workshop, leveraging cloud-based uh, virtual desktop for bioimage analysis with band and deep image J. So my name is E. Uh, I'm uh, from Ambo Heidelberg, and my uh, uh, colleague Katarina from the uh, University of Madrid. So this workshop will be presented by both of us. So it has two parts. So in the first part, I will go through some details about the pro platform itself. It's called the uh, band. And in the second uh, part, so Katarina will uh, talk uh, about some details about deep deep image J and how to use deep image J on the band platform. Uh, first of all, I have to acknowledge uh, a few institutions. So for the band platform, uh, it was uh, Euro bioimaging contribution to the uh, European Open Science Cloud uh, Live, uh, EOS Live uh, project, and then it is. Uh, uh, Dendi, the German uh, Bioinformatic Infrastructure Services, and it's currently hosted in uh, Envo Heidelberg. So, but now it's uh, supported by the uh, NFDI for Bioimage Project. Okay, so uh, why we created the platform and the motivations? So, the main uh, motivation of creating this platform is to move the uh, bioimage uh, analysis workflow to the cloud environment. Um, so the current situations, so how the uh, image analysts pr uh, perform their experiment is that uh, they normally do all the uh, experiment on a local workstation using some uh, graphical interface. And then to move the workflow into the cloud and then usually it will require uh, preserving interactivities. So the solutions, there are some solutions already exist. So the first uh, solution, first uh, kind of solution is to uh, bring your applications uh, to the cloud. So for example, um, Galaxy, uh, if you want to create your workflow in Galaxy, you will probably need to recreate your uh, uh, interface of your tools. So you need to write some kind of uh, XML wrappers. So this can be uh, challenging for if you're not uh, from the IT, Person, and then the second type of solution is to well to bring your computer to the cloud, so the workstation environment to the cloud, and then in this uh, kind of solutions, so first uh, first one you can just simply create a virtual uh, VM in the cloud, so uh, probably most people are very familiar with this, and then the second one is to use a more uh, cloud native approach, so you create a container and put everything in the container and run that in the cloud, but. Uh, both of this uh, method uh, has some limitations. Uh, if you need multiple tools in a single uh, VM or you put multiple tools in a single containers, you may have some version conflict. So one workflow requires this version, but you, another tool requires another version and it's quite challenging to solve the dependency problem. And the third uh, type of solution is called Strudel Web. So it's uh, originally uh, developed from the uh, Monash University. Um, so the features of Strudel Web, so it's a virtual desktop solution in the uh, cloud and it has on-demand resource specifications, uh, which means the user can select how much uh, how much resource you need. So how many CPUs, how, ma how much memories. And the uh, application is uh, containerized. So it's independent from the uh, uh, desktop environment. So you just need to containerize your application and then put it on the uh, cloud. So uh, the third feature of this solution is that uh, each a user desktop uh, runs in a cluster environment. So your backend is a, a cluster scheduler. So inspired by the uh, Strudel web, so we created the uh, band, uh, which is called bioimage uh, analysis desktop. So this is where it locates band.embo.de. And then if you have any questions or need some help, you can always uh, reach out to this uh, email. Okay, so some facts about the band. So the band um, was, uh, in beta version since October 2021, and then it's went production since January 2022. So currently we have more than 600 registered users. And then um, at the backend, at backend infrastructure, everything is virtual and then it's hosted on the OpenStack prov provided by the uh, Danby Cloud. 
So we, we didn't create it from the, uh, from scratch. So we uh, borrowed some components from the uh, Monash uh, e-research center, uh, the uh, components they used to build a uh, through the web initially. And then uh, the band has some GPUs for both computation and uh, 3D graphic rendering. So uh, it can be ex uh, accessed from anywhere in the world as long as you have uh, internet connections. Uh, it becomes quite popular uh, for courses. So we have hosted uh, several courses, for example, the EMBO practicals uh, with the uh, band platform. Okay, the, uh, this is the uh, system architecture, uh, the technical architecture of the band platform. So basically it has uh, three layers. Uh, in the front end, we have a, a public facing portal, which is uh, uh, hosted by the NGX uh, web server. Uh, the portal itself is a, a standard uh, Angular JS web ap applications. Uh, we have a Tomcat web container uh, host, uh, Guacamole. Uh, Guacamole is a, a open source software which renders your uh, desktop or VNC desktop into a, a HTML file, so you can see that from your browser. And the APIs are just uh, Java script, so used for the portal talks to the backend. Uh, the second layer is authentication. So uh, we don't store user credentials, but we do use a, a identity, a identity a broker called Kicklock. So the authentication is dedicated to uh, Google currently. So, and then uh, we have a separate LDAP server which stores the user uh, information. So once you authenticate through Google, so we get a username and email from the uh, token sent from Google. And we store user first name, last name, and the email into our LDAP server. So for account creation is a, uh, a set of uh, Python script. So it's just create the user home directory in the system and create a, your user LDAP entry. Uh, the backend is quite standard. So it's a standard Slurm cluster. Uh, we have an NFS server uh, uh, stores the uh, user home directories, user files, and some uh, application containers. So this container is pre-built, so it's only built by uh, admins. And then um, when a user can just start it from their uh, desktop. And we have some spaces for scratch, uh, scratch spaces. So it's a cluster FS system. Uh, for data access, so if you want to use your data uh, in the desktop, you have to use some uh, the, uh, uh, data access client, which we made available in the desktop. So currently we support uh, Omero and some on cloud, uh, but we do recommend use S3 compatible storage. Okay, so the resources we have now, so we have a limited resource. So in the uh, system backend, we have three large uh, GPU nodes. Each GPU has about, uh, each, each node has eight G, uh, GPUs. So three GPU we uh, reserved for graphic rendering and 21 for uh, computations. So, and we have another four CPU nodes. So this is for uh, internal cluster drop. So you actually can su submit cluster drop from your band desktop. Uh, you submit the drop you submitted is to uh, is submitted to the uh, band uh, cluster itself. Uh, so we have some CPUs and uh, RAMs. So this can be requested when you launch your desktop. Uh, home directory space is a bit limited. So currently it's only 1.6 terabytes. And, uh, the data on your home directory is persistent for three months. So after three months, we will just go and delete it. Uh, scratch space, uh, we have 20 terabytes and the policy applies to scratch space uh, is also three months. So after three months, your data will be deleted. And if this space is not enough, and then you can always contact us, we can mount additional ones for you. Okay, uh, authentication. So as I uh, mentioned before, so currently only Google. So uh, we also have LS, uh, AI login, but it's currently disabled because we have some ongoing uh, discussion with Ambo uh, legal office, so it's not finalized yet, but in terms of uh, functionalities, it's already there, but uh, yes, so currently you can only log in with Google. And the application currently available on the platform, so uh, you can just go through uh, uh, three, three lists, so we have three categories. Uh, each one of the application is a singularity container. So it's built by admin. So uh, admin build the application into a container and put it somewhere. So you can start it from your band desktop from the standard menu. And the uh, desktop environment is directly installed onto the uh, compute node. So it's not part of the uh, uh, container. Uh, 
So in this case, so anyone, if you have your own uh, container, you can just bring to us, you can make it available. So you don't have to worry about all the uh, X11 dependencies, all the graphical stuff. And each desktop is a, a Slurm, a standard Slurm VNC job. So uh, it looks like a desktop, but in the backend, it's a Slurm VNC session. Okay, and for data access, so there are two types of data access. So uh, first is local. So you have to stage your data in your local, uh, either in your home directory or scratch space. So you need to copy your data to there before you do your environment, if you choose to use uh, local storage. Uh, second one is to remote. So you can use the uh, data access clients available from application data access. And uh, again, so S3 is a recommended uh, the type of storage we recommend to use uh, band. Uh, okay, so uh, it, it, the band platform itself, it, or, although it's primarily targeted to the imaging domain, but it becomes quite popular currently for uh, courses and workshops. So uh, the main message I want to deliver here is that if you uh, want to do a course with band and it's highly, highly customizable. So anything uh, you see in the desktop is customizable, whether you need an additional uh, application or you need a, some software dependency in your conda environment, everything we can customize to your requirement. And for past courses, so the complete list is here. So band and both the courses. So these are some examples uh, of the courses we have done. Okay, so now I will just do a quick demo. Uh, just quit this. Okay, so so this is the home page of the band platform. So if you're interested in organizing a course, you click this button, and then there are some procedures, uh, some informations you need to know. And here. Uh, is the list of applications currently on band. So to log in, uh, you need to agree to the terms of use and privacy notice. So if this is your first time uh, to use band, after click login, and then you go through the Google authentication, you need to wait for uh, email, confirmation email. But because I've logged in before, so the uh, browser remembers my uh, session, so you didn't, uh, I don't have to wait for the email again. So now the first page after login uh, is this page. So you can customize your desktop uh, based, uh, based on what you want to do. So you can choose some CPU, some memory, whether you need GPU or not. So currently we only allocate one GPU, one desktop and you click launch. Okay, you can see your desktop is already here. So. Uh, there are two ways to access your desktop. SSH to the desktop where you have a terminal in your browser. So if you uh, uh, prefer a uh, command line and then you can use the SSH part. Otherwise you can uh, click uh, go to desktop. Okay, so here is your desktop and then on the menus applications. So. Uh, data access, you have all these options. And then the image analysis. So I will just open a couple. Uh, well, it depends on the size of your container because this application are actually containers in the backend. Depends on your network and your container size. So it may take some time to start. Uh, and for programming, we have Jupyter, MATLAB, and RStudio. So uh, the MATLAB, uh, we have, uh, a license uh, to run uh, MATLAB in the cloud environment, but you will need to have your own uh, license if you choose to use this. So, and this R Studio was a customized environment for a previous course. So, I will start in Jupyter. Yeah. So, uh, I started two uh, applications. First is Fiji. So, uh, it was pre-built with uh, some plugins, but if you want to use the Fiji, this Fiji in the uh, applications, you only have a read permission, so you can't install your own uh, plugins. Uh, but if you need to install your own plugins or you think there's nothing in the list is uh, usable for you, you can always install your own copy of applications. So 
uh, you can go to a web page, a uh, web page, download a feature plugin, and then because everything in your home home directory is writable, so uh, you can always customize anything that suits your needs. But in this case, if you choose to install install your own applications, then you you may need to configure a GPU by yourself. So. Uh, here is the Jupyter I started from the programming menu. So uh, we created a, a set of kernels. So in the backend, this is just a uh, conda environment. So I'll just run a simple script. Uh, yeah. Maybe this one. So. You can see GPU is uh, already available, so you don't need to install GPU or the uh, uh, dependency GPU de dependency to make it work. You can just straight away do your uh, experiment. So here, uh, yeah, you can see your uh, process. So there's another uh, Camera X, which uh, runs on GPU. So this is to show that GPU, uh, Camera X has actually used GPU for rendering. So you open an example, uh, and it's uh, quite smooth. If you're not running on uh, this this example on the GPU, then there may be some delays when you zoom or pan the images. Okay, that's uh, pretty much everything from me. Uh, any questions? Uh, let's check whether there's any questions. Uh, if there's no questions, uh, I'll uh, pass the stage to Katarina. So she will go through deep image day and some other stuff. Yes. Hi. I'm trying to uh, yeah, share my screen. Yeah. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Perfect. So, um, hi to everyone. Thank you for your presentation about band systems. We're going to do our workshop and it's going to be a uh, first part, more an introduction of what DeepImageJ is and the bioimage model Zoom. And then we're going to do a hands-on. So to do this hands-on, we're going to use uh, the band system that the already already showed. Uh, so thank you very much for being here. I have the chat here. So if at any moment anyone wants to do a question, I'll try to read it. If not, uh, please open your mic and just ask me, okay? Okay, so uh, my name is Cedrina. Uh, this is my web page. If you want, I'll let you my contact info at the end. So if you need anything from me, you want to contact, you have further questions or whatever. And I work with uh, together with other people on DBMH and the BioMH model too. So as I've just said, what we're going to do in this workshop is to first cover what it actually is DBMJ, what's the BioMH model do, and then do a bit of a hands-on. So uh, all materials are in this GitHub repo, so you can check it. And I would recommend you that, as G has already said, we're going to do the workshop on a cleaning style of the Fiji tool on our band system. So if you open your band desktop, uh, you will have something like this. And then you will have, wait. Uh, okay, I don't know. Okay, so you will have this uh, desktop, something like this, and uh, what we have to do is to do a clean style of Fiji. In the Markdown file, where all the guide for this workshop is, you already have how to uh, download it. You can have all the info here. But basically you go to Fiji and you download it. So if you start downloading it, once I finish with my presentation, sure it will be downloaded and we can start
start working on it. So the PMJ uh, is a plugin for Fiji, and it was born from this need in which nowadays in biomedical analysis there is uh, a need for a lot of knowledge in many different areas. So, for example, if you're a life scientist, you might know uh, how to take samples or whatever like this, but maybe you lack of programming skills in Python, for example. So, what one of our main goals was to uh, propose to have a tool that can be able to do different tasks of deep learning tasks together with Fiji. So uh, we provide these zero code tools that you don't need to have knowledge on programming to run, for example, deep learning uh, algorithms. I don't know your knowledge. If any of you have used Fiji uh, before today or DBMJ, your knowledge on deep, the deep learning, but I'll try to cover it in uh, basic, uh, yes, like from basic steps. So uh, we have DeepMJ, which is uh, this plugin for Fiji, as I just said, that uh, was published some years ago by all my colleagues, which are Estivaliz, Carlos, Wei, uh, Arrate, Daniel, and more people. And it's part of the KTA collaboration between the KTAs, the Universidad Carlos III de Madrid, where I'm from, and then the APFL. I think we have Daniel Sage, Daniel Sage here as a representative too. Thank you, Daniel, if you're here. I don't know. So basically, uh, what we have that DBMJ offers us is that it's a user-friendly tool inside Fiji because it's a plugin, as I have said, it's a tool inside this Fiji uh, that is open source. So you can see it, you can touch it, you can even contribute to it. And then it's widely used among life scientists. Sometimes it's, I think it's funny because I just know, I go somewhere, which is now, for example, my university, and I see people working and I see that they are using deep image. And I'm pretty amazed by it because it's like, wow, it's important. People are actually using it. And then it's fully equipped with scientific image visualization and quantification. This is how uh, Fiji just mm, looks like. When someone asks me what is Fiji, I try to explain it as it is kind of a Photoshop for biomedical analysis in which you can do a lot, a lot of different tasks. The good thing of Fiji is that we have a lot of different tools that you can perform different tasks. Apart from DPMJ, in which you can run models, I'll try to explain you bit more in deep uh, this. You can have other plugins, such as, for example, to do annotations on images, or I don't know. There are many, many different tools, so it's really, really useful. I recommend you that after this workshop, if you haven't ever tried Fiji, you just go and download it, use it on your computer and your band system, and just play with it. There are many different things that you can do with Fiji and that can be useful for you and your work. So, um, DBMJ is what I've just said, that it's for people with zero code experience because it lets you uh, run these deep learning algorithms without the need of programming. It's really easy to use. It uh, uses something from Fiji, which is called the macros. Macros is, is just a language, a pro kind of a programming language for Fiji, in which if you do certain steps, like for example, uh, we will we will see how we can we can do it during the workshop. But if you do different steps, like for example, change brightness, do some thresholds, subtract images or everything, you can record these using the Fiji macros and then apply it to another image. So you do not have to repeat all the steps again for all the images you have. So I think it's really, really useful and it's really easy to do. You don't need to program it because the macro as you record it will do it for you. 
uh, then it's uh, one interface for different models, even TensorFlow or PyTorch. It's uh, one gig installation. You will see that it's really, really easy to install Fiji and then install plugins as DBMJ. Uh, can run on your laptop, on your CPU, GPU. Uh, there are many, many models. So I will explain to you what is the bioimage model too, uh, in which it's your base legally a repository for different um, models, data sets and applications in which you can find, for example, a lot of different models ready to use so you can download them and run them on DBMJ. And then as I just said, it's really easy to have this model sharing. You can either use one model that someone has uploaded somewhere or even you can run your own models. And yes, it has a, an interface, so it's easier to use it. Uh, there are many different tasks that you can do with DBMJ. You can check the paper. I just put the um, title of it some slides before. The slides, by the way, are also on the GitHub, so you can have them. Uh, these images are taken from the paper itself where DBMG was presented. But as you can see, we can do super resolution, segmentation, like instant segmentation, uh, virtual staining, image classification, or whatever task or deep, deep uh, learning you can think of. Um, it's really, really useful because you can feed the trained model and use it afterwards. Please remember that if you have questions, just stop me and I'll try to answer it. Uh, so this is how DBMJ looks like. We are on version 3.0 now. That's screenshots from yesterday. So basically you have the Fiji here. That's just how Fiji looks like. It's this, just this small window in which you can do a lot of different tasks. And then when you select to the plug plugins, you can go to DBMJ run and just run the model. Uh, overwhelming image. You can run it, for example, on an example image from a uh, model that you have already uh, downloaded, for example, for the bio image model too, or you can do it on your own images. So that's an idea of how deep image J is. Uh, I'm not going to cover it quite deeply because I don't know if we have much time. We were going to see it then on the hands-on experience. And there, I recommend you there to ask me more questions. So the Biomage Model Zoom, it's a repository in which you can find different models, data sets, or researches. There are different tools that we call the community partners that are tools that are able to run some of these models or all of them. We are with DPMJ one of these community partners, but you can find many others. So for example, Zero Cost, DL4MIC, which are a set of notebooks with pre-trained models that you can use also to train, um, train networks over your data or example data. And then there are some of these notebooks, for example, that has a way to uh, export the models in the bioimage model zoo format. Because we, with the bioimage model zoo, we have a specific format in which the models are uploaded and, and downloaded. This way uh, is easier um, to have this whole configuration and integration between all these different tools. So uh, we have a model card for each of the models and each model card has one model inside. Each model has, as it is a zoo, has this name of an animal with together with uh, an adjective. So you can refer to the model by, for example, its name or even uh, with its identifier, which is this animal. We're going to see it later. Uh, okay, so the by image model zoo, you have a uh, the model card, as you said, that you can download the model, you can share it, you can see the data set in which it was trained, you can test the model. And this is, I think, one of the parts that you would be more interested to use. Uh, then we have all softwares or tools that we can run these models 
different applications. And then all apart from these models, we can also find that the says and others. So what we do is that we store these models in Zenodo. So for example, these days, I don't know if you know Zenodo, it's a repository. Uh, was uh, kind of, uh, there was a conflict. So I don't know. I think everything's working now, but they changed something from the back end. So the biomage model zoo was kind of struggling a bit. But I think everything's working now and will work for the hands on experience. Okay, so basically, what I want to try for you to understand is the utility of the biomage model do for someone, for example, who has a model or who wants a model. So if, for example, you're a life scientist, you maybe have data that you need to model to run on it, for example, to perform cell image segmentation, image segmentation on cell images. So what you can do is to try to find the model that best suits you from our repository, from the biomage model zoo and run it on your data with one of the different tools that we have. Or the other way is that you can be a contributor of models. You can be a developer of models. You, your work is to develop different models on your image analysis. So what you can do is to upload these models so other people, such as life scientists, can uh, train, can use their models with their own data. This way, I think it's a kind of a symbiosis because any everybody benefits from it. If you're a developer, you get people to use your model to get cited, you get cited because someone is using your model and if you have data, what you can do is to get the model and you do not need to have a new pipeline programmed in Python by you if you don't know how to code at all. So I think it's really, really useful. Um, this workshop is quite short. So the information that is inside the Biomage Model 2 or Fiji or DPMJ is really extensive. I recommend you to, after it, go just play, look around and whatever. So you get the whole picture of it. If you have questions further these days while you're playing on it, uh, just write me and I will be really glad to answer your questions. That is how a model card looks like. Uh, so, for example, we have this uh, model that is a status model for nucleic segmentation. And, for example, what I've just told you later is this animal identification thing, which is we have here this funny chatty frog. Uh, and then inside this model card, we can find many different things. Uh, if I click, yes, we go to the biomage model zoo. This is the biomage model zoo, the web page. This is the card we were in. And here you can have, you can see that we have the download button in which you can download it, for example, for DBMJ and different weight formats. You can check uh, the dat data set, wait, the data set, then you can run this in model in elastic, QPath, star these, uh, that's, yeah, that is it. We can go again. DPMJ, and then you can share it. And then that's the source code that we use to retrieve information. That would be really useful uh, for you if you're planning to, in some moment, contribute with new models with the biomage model zoo. These are how we format everything so the biomage model zoo can read it and display it, and we can run it properly. So uh, we have some images in some models. We'll have the example images, uh, the input and output images or whatever. Then we can have some uh, tags, some documentation, a quick test of the model that I think now is a working process and it don't think it's working now, but maybe in some days you can try it. It's just uh, that you can, test the model straightforward without having to download anything just to see if this model suits you for the maybe for the issue you're trying to cover or whatever you need to do. Um, you can upload your own file, you can use the example image and run the model and then you will see the simple input and the sample output. 
So in this model car, you can see also training that uh, you can see this test summary is saying who can run this model, who is able of our community partners to run this model. So you can easily access, access it, how to cite it. And even if you have some uh, problems with some specific model, you can write it here. So the important thing to get to know about biomatch model zoom is getting to know also the, wait, is there, is there download options? How can I find out? which one I need to use. It will depend on the task you need to perform. I recommend you to uh, beforehand check these uh, tools and get to know them a bit so you can choose the tool that it suits you best. So once we get in the bioimage model zoom, we'll have all these models. And you can find many, many different models for many different uh, tasks. You can see the tasks here. You can use, for example, filter the models that you want to see by dimensions, the software. For example, you're used to work with Elastic. You can filter which models can you run with Elastic. If you need to do image classification, you just add it to the tag. So you can filter it and see easily how to do it. And then the most one of the most important things is this here. All documentation is in the documentation button here, you can see. And there is kind of a user guide. This guide is going to change uh, in some time now because we're working on it. Uh, but you can find all the information here, you just have to look a bit. And then here you have how, how to basically contact us, how to look uh, for our help, or anyone's help in the community. This is the Image SD forum that you can see here. The Image SD forum is a forum from the community. I don't know if you never saw it for image analysis, basically, in which you can post uh, any issue, any problem, or even you can seek for assistance for uh, your image analysis problem. And there is a lot of people contributing. We are here also contributing. So the community is really dynamic. So if you need some help, some assistance, uh, you will get it pretty, pretty fast. It's kind of a stack overflow thing, but for image analysis, I really recommend to use Image SD forum for your questions because uh, maybe some people have the same problems as you and others can benefit from your questions. So this way we have the community growing and the symbiosis between everyone helping the others. Then uh, we have this feedback form, which is new, in which you can give us uh, your feedback about documentation, how to use the model do, and everything. We really appreciate uh, having people and users feedback because this way we can keep on improving and we have some feedback from the outside to see where, yes, where we can improve. You can visit the source code of the bioimage geo. Uh, you can contact us to, through a type for message. Uh, you will see that we will ask your position, what do you need from us and everything. Uh, and here is the AI for Life project, which is one of the funding projects of the Bioimage Model. So you can here find a lot of many different things. You can find also maybe events that we're doing, news, what we try to do, what we cover, everything. And in the help desk here, you can also have a lot of information, not only about the AI for Life project, but also about the Bioimage Model too. So yes, that's kind of how the Bioimage Model Zoo works. I hope you kind of have uh, an idea of it because then we're going to do the hands-on and you'll have to work on it. So uh, as I've just said, you have the slides here. Yes, in this GitHub repo, uh, if you go here, you'll find this markdown file with the guide of what are we going to do today. 
Yes, all the exercises, how to some uh, images so you can see how we're going to do it so you can focus a bit. I hope that this information is useful enough and detailed enough. So if you get really, really lost, you can write me, you can stop me, but you can repeat this at your house, like on your own, because I think everything is really, really detailed. Uh, I think that we don't have like enough time to get to know deeper Fiji and DPMJ. So really recommend you to go on it after it. So we're going to start with what I just said before by downloading the Fiji installation. Uh, question, are you on band? Have you logged in? Have you launched your desktop? Uh, yes, are you in? You can write on the chat. You can unmute yourself because it would be really interesting that you do it at the same time as me. Maybe sometime I can give you some time to just play a bit with it. Uh, if not, if you see it really complicated, I can do it. You try to follow me and then you do it on your own. But it really, really be really useful if you do it at the same time. I don't see anything on the chat, but it would be really interesting. So if not, I will start working on it. So we have the Fiji download. Here we have the Fiji app. Wait, this one. What we first have to do is that Fiji don't come with all plugins installed. Yes. Uh, so what we can do is to uh, update it. Remember that you have everything written here. So what we need to do is to first install DPMJ and Morphly plugins. Uh, in our feed installation. So the first thing that we have to do is to go to help. Uh, you have to download it and install it because if not, it, we will have problems with the um, with permits and these things with the band system. Let's see if this works. It should. So have you tried to open your band desktop or download Fiji? If it's impossible for you to now launch your band desktop, you can uh, do it on your computer. Wait. Okay. So I'm going to try to do it. Try to see if you can follow me because it's going to be a bit distance. So let's see if we get this working. Please. I think that there are several of you that there's a lot of people here. So maybe some of you can try it. Okay. Uh, sorry, I, I'll just jump in here. So uh, if you want to use Fiji on band, you need a bigger desktop, at least eight gig memories. So when you launch your desktop, you need to select more than eight gig memories. So the ah, okay. Is enough. Yeah. Okay, perfect. This way we know it. Stop yeah. desktop. Yes. Great. Really useful. Like this? Uh, yes, at least eight gig. You can uh, choose more than eight gig. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, yes. Go to this. Perfect. Do is it download? Yes. Okay. I'm going to try and launch Fiji. Um, meanwhile, uh, do you need at least one GPU for DBMJ? 
Jean? So if you're running uh, Fiji uh, from your uh, home directory, I think for this workshop, it, uh, the plugin comes with all the engines, right? the tensor yeah. flow torch. Yeah, you can try that, but yeah. No. Okay, so the first step that we have to do is to update PG. Uh, through help update. Everything is written down on the guide that you have on the GitHub repo. So I'm just doing it now so you can see how to do it. You have an idea and then later you can do it on your own. So I was about to say that you can have all my information here. There's my web page, my contact info, my Twitter. So there are many different ways in which you can contact me if you have further questions on anything like that. You can also contact me for any information about band systems. Please don't retrain your knowledge, like don't retain it. <laughs> Ask questions, participate really useful okay it takes a while um i hope we have time to do all exercises because they are really really interesting uh yes meanwhile you can also go to the biomage.io website just play a bit because i will ask you some questions uh for the biomage.io website you do not need to log in with band okay Okay, now it's up to date. So uh, to, to install the plugins that we need for this workshop that doesn't come with the clean installation of Fiji, you just go to manage of that site and you need two of them. The first one is dpmaj. You can use this, dpmaj, and you select it. And then the other one is written here is to use morpholibj. Yes is this one, you select it. So now we have these two selected. We apply and close. You will find them listed here and we apply changes. Once we have applied the changes, update successfully, please restart. Exactly, we have to restart VMRJ. So we close it and then we open it again. And we should have the installation of DBMJ and MorphoLibJ that will be used for this workshop. So here's what's that Fiji. And if you go to plugins, you will see that there are many, many, many different plugins. One of them is DBMJ. So this is what we're going to use uh, today for the workshop. So for now on, you can start by. Uh, Okay. Got it. To the Biomedia website. And you'll find the first exercise familiarize yourself with the Biomedia Model Zoo and understand how to access documentation and resources. So, my idea is to give you five minutes. So, you can go open Biomedia uh, Model Zoo. Can get the link of the GitHub, please. Yes, I can put it here. In, in, in workshop Here, these plugins I pre-installed in the band that I can see. Uh, not all of them is what I just told you. So when you do this clean style of the Fiji, because you should do it so we can then uh, add the path and run the models. Once you have this clean style on uh, with Fiji that you have to, it's what I did in the beginning of the of the of the workshop. I don't know if you were here. You have to just go to Fiji here, download Fiji, and once you have it uh, downloaded, it's you don't need to do an installation. You just open it, and then you go to help update. You will update it, and at the end of the update, because that now will take uh, much less time. Yeah, uh, you just go to manage update sites. 
here and here are the list of all the plugins that you can have and you can and you should just have to check these two that I have written down on the guide dbm j and this one here and then apply and close and then it's important to restart the image day so you can see the changes that are applied. So now uh, we have these, the bioimage model zoo and the idea that you have five minutes or something like this to go through the bioimage model zoo. Just look what the documentation is, how to look for it, find the image SD forum. I just showed you everything where it was, but I want you to engage with it and to see how kind of works. Then you can look for, for example, one mo one model, the one you want, or maybe this one here, and you examine the model card, look at it, and yes, just have a look at it, please. Uh, okay. Uh, any question? That's because you understand everything and I'm explaining it everything perfectly. So you don't have any questions. Yeah, we are on the easy, easiest part of the workshop. Okay. I hope you all have found the guide and can read it. So has anyone gone into the biomatch model zoo, look for the model card, found anything? If you've done it, if you've gone to the biomatch model zoo website, can you just write, for example, I did it, it's amazing. That's a lot of hard work. It's super difficult, I don't know. Any feedback would be nice. If not, okay, I did it and really clear. Oh, thank you very much. Perfect. Yes, to all. Great. So um, you see how model cards work. You see the information of that the sets. For example, we want to see this one, which is the Bastilus. We go to here. We can filter it with even the name. We found this model card. We found we this uh, nice name, which I found really funny, the things of the names, because you will find some different and strange combination of uh, adjectives and names. So it's a bit funnier, right? Uh, okay, so now we're going to move on to next exercise, because I think you all know how to use the biomatch model too. So now we're going to make fully use of it by downloading a model and use it in the environment chain. So learn how to download the model and integrate it with the biomatch in Fiji. So look for a model to segment these pathology images using a list. So for example, we can use this one. So we take the name, we can look for it, or we can filter if you we already know the model that we want to use which is this one so what we have to do is just as simple as going to dpmj and download the model that is already prepared to launch it with dpmj so you download it and it downloads great so now we have it on downloads here Okay, it's a zip file. Don't unzip it. It will work as it is. So what we have to do now is just to install the model in Fiji. To do this, we're going to use the dbmj plugin and we're going to use dbmj install model. So we just go to plugins, dbmj, and dbmj install model. As I said, everything is written on the guide. So I think that you can do it also later on your own. You can have uh, two options here. One is to just select a model from Biomage Model 2, but this time, so you can see how to upload your own model uh, zip file. You do this, and I think we can, we can even drag and drop. Yes. 
And that's what it should work. We accept the conditions, read them, and we install them. The panelists has to correspond to what, ah, that's what happened to me yesterday with the band system. I try to remove the file, uh, colon, slash, slash, just start with slash home. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just slash home. Yeah. Yes. Nope, not working. If not, I'm going to show it from my own computer. Or you uh, can try a slash NFS slash home. Yeah. What? Uh, slash NFS slash home and everything else. Yeah. I'm not following you. How do I install the uh, image? So, so, uh, because can you the, write it on the chat? Yes, yes because the home, a home directory is a NFS mount. So uh, here and then. So you start with NFS home. And then ah, okay. Yeah. Perfect. Try that. Yeah. Nope. Oh. Uh, meanwhile, referring to the question I have on the chat, how do I install DBMJ or Flip plugins in Fiji? Uh, said it, it's on the guide. You just have to go to help, update. Uh, this will start updating. And at the end, it will say manage update sites. In manage update sites, you have a list of the plugins and you just have to select the ones you want. One is dbmatj and the other is morphlibj, which doesn't have this name. The name is with this one. Okay, just select it. You apply and close, and then apply and close. I don't have anything because I already have them. Um, I don't know how to do this. Not we can do start this HNA nucleus implementation. Is this working? Yes. Uh, so that is how we should uh, to install a model from a zip file. We do it this way. But sometimes from these band systems might not work uh, because of the path, uh, because of the um, permissions. It, so, sorry, is that, is that because there's an ampersand between H and in, in the zip file name? Yeah. Maybe they want me to yeah, try to probably, change it. Yeah, just try to change it, probably because of that. Okay, rename. Let me try this. Yes. It was this. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. So uh, taking to account that I can add it to the guide later, uh, that if there is a number sign here, it won't let you read the path. Uh, it is not a problem. If I go to the terminal and get the correct path downloads, but then I get the message that the seed file is not the correct format. Uh, that should not happen if you have downloaded the zip from the DB, from the bioimage model zoo. Try to do what I've just done, which is just removing the ampersand and put anything else or just removing it and try it again. If not, it, to look for the path, you can do, just go to properties. You just have to have the path here or just copy it or whatever. So uh, you add the zip file here, you accept the, you accept this and you install it. And once it's installed, you will, you can go to plugins, dbmaj, dbmaj run, and you will find this. And it's not appearing. Okay, we'll think. Right, I think it's still okay. It's still uh, installing it. So once models are installed in model, you can have different models. So for example, if you are using the biomatch model zoo and you try different models, then you can um, you can uh, have a display here of all the models that you have installed into Fiji DPMJ. And you can choose the one you want. Yes, you see, I've uh, added twice this one, so I have it twice. The models can also be found here. If you open the, 
the folder of Fiji, where the Fiji is located, you can go to models and find it here. Okay. So we select the Stardust uh, model, and you can see here that it says run an example image. You just run it and say, oh, fast. We're going to try the other one. Yes. And it should work. So now it's running on the image. You see the runtime, everything, and we have it running on the example image that it is provided uh, in the bioimage model zoom. So we have the input image and the output image like this. This is just an example on how to download a model and run it. Uh, now what we're going to do, you have all steps here. Uh, as you can see, select the model you start and click run an example image. Uh, now what we're going to do is to move on to the third exercise. Uh, yes, I hope we have time to cover it. It's a bit more complex because what we are going to do is to do instant segmentation of cells and we're going to add a post process of it, a post process to the model. So this way we can see the fully experience of Fiji and how we can do many different things with Fiji and all plugins. So we're going to use also Deep Imagine, Morpholy plugin and other different tools that Fiji has. It's important to remark that uh, this pipeline that we're going to cover our workflow for the post-processing of the model is uh, for this model. If you have any other different task, for example, which is, for example, image classification, this post-process won't, uh, won't be useful because uh, biologically you have to have your own post-process for each model. So I'm going to try to move to the next exercise, okay? So we go again to... Um, to the biomage model zoo, and we're going to download the hiding tiger, which is this model here, to perform these other exercises. We can remove here this. We open again biomage model zoo. We look for this model again. Now you are now you are experts on the biomage model zoo, so you perfectly know how to look for a model. So I have this hiding tiger here. We select it. We obtain the model card. You can see it here we have the example images, uh, how to do this. We have everything that we've been seeing and covering during the workshop of this model card. And here you find the button to download um, this model for DBMJ. We have it, we download it. This one is in touch script. So we just download the model. And then we are going to install it as we did it previously for the other one. Okay. Remember that you have everything here in the guide. So I'm going to um, read the guide. We're going to do it together, but you can do it again. I don't know if this is recorded. I think so. You can check it again. Oh, wait. Uh, it's here. Okay, it's downloaded. So we just get to our folder where downloads are. Uh, okay, this is the model that we're going to use now, the one that we have just downloaded. So uh, I'm going to repeat the process again on how to install a model in DeepMJ. So you go to plugins, you go to DBMJ. Remember that DBMJ do not come with the Fiji clean installation. You have to install it, it's on the guide. You go to DBMJ install model and disappears. So again, we could choose a model from the biomage model too or install it from our own, um, from our, our own home. So in Bansky instance, we remove this. We add the NFC 
I think that we all have a different number here, so I cannot share with you the path. And we accept the conditions and install it. Okay. <laughs> uh, is it NFS, or, or you can just start with home uh, without that. NFS, uh, yes, sorry. Uh -huh. Install it. Okay. Let's see if we can manage. Hmm. No, when you drag and drop it at the space at the end and the file is not recognized. Oh, thank you very much. That's super useful. I got an error message, which I got an error message when I want to run an example and support the format or file not found. Okay. Um, if not working, because maybe um, we have these in all those problems, try to, if not, install the model from the one here for now to play with it. And then we can see it later. Uh, we can talk about it to see how we cover it. I think that the model, what we have here is installed. So now we go to plugins, dbmj, uh, dbmj run, and we should have the model. Yes, it's this one here. Live cell segmentation, run an example image. Okay, we'll try to keep on with this. I don't know, invite that to run. Okay, do you know if this might be this? problem with the PyTorch model and band system cloud model error frames. Okay. Uh, this this model is preloaded into the uh, the other uh, instance from the menu. So the live cell segmentation. So this is running from your home, but if you can't get it running, you can use the one from the menu. So this so, one you're saying, right? Uh, no, no, from the application menu, application image analysis, Fiji. Uh, ah, okay. A, yeah, that one. Okay, is, let's try it. Uh, Pre-installed. Yes. Okay. Uh, I, I think. Wait. I think. Uh, I think when you launch your desktop, we didn't ask for GPU. Did you? Uh, okay. You probably. Uh, you it's know. uh to find the Fiji installation that comes with the band system, uh, band yeah. desktop. You have yes. to go to applications, image analysis, and Fiji. Uh, I mean, yeah. your desktop has a GPU. I mean, when you launch the band desktop. I don't know. Did you ask? Uh, me? No. Oh, no. Yeah. So you need. Should I reload it? Yes. Right. Uh, yeah. You just uh, stop it and then restart uh, desktop okay. with GPU. Yeah. Okay. So for this one, we stop it. Stop desktop. This way, you see how to use uh, desktop and how to launch it, how to use GPUs and everything. So now we launch it. Yes. Have you managed to to get your desktop and everything? Okay, we can check it later. Go to desktop. Try to do it with the Fiji installation. Now uh, we're going to try it with this new model now if it works. So you can try it. Fiji. I just went to again applications, image analysis, Fiji. Okay, plugins. DBMJ is here. So if it's pre installed, we go for the run. And the model that we're using for this exercise is the live cell segmentation boundary model. So he said live cell segmentation boundary model. It's here, perfect. Uh, okay. It's loading. Let's wait a bit. So have you found Fiji on the installation of the band desktop? Remember that you can also try to do this on your own computer. 
uh, Fiji is for Linux, Windows, and MacOS oh, systems. Okay, still running. So this, as I said before, uh, we have 20 more minutes, perfect. As I said before, this exercise here, we have a post-processing. Okay, it's done. Okay, so now we have the sample input and the output obtained by running the model. And we're going to do some things to have a clear way of how to visualize the results and at the end, we'll have this segmentation of cells uh, that we want, the semantic segmentation over this image. So to do so, we have to follow the guide. Um, okay, so the first step for the post process, what, now that we have the model launch, is to split the channel. So we select the output image, we go to image, color and split channels. So we obtain these two images here because we obtain one image per channel. So for the first one, we are going to now binarize both channels uh, using thresholding. For the first one, which is the binary mask, we have to go to image, uh, adjust, then the threshold. We just set it to 0 0.5. Everything is written down in the guide, OK? And then we apply it. We convert it into a mask. That's what we want. And then we close this. Now for the second mask, well, the second uh, image, we're going to binarize it well, as well through image, adjust, threshold. We're going to leave it in 3, 5. And we're going to apply it again, convert into mask. Okay. So now, uh, thank you, Daniel, for the assistance. This way we can keep on working with this. So now what we're going to do is to generate the cell landmarks for the market control watershed segmentations using the MorphoLibJ plugin. So to do this, we're going to select this image and we go to plugins we should have this installed uh because it comes with the band desktop and if not remember that you have to install it if you have a clean installation of fiji so with morpholip j we select it we go to segmentation and we see that the matter control watershed our input everything what i'm saying is here, okay? So if you get lost, uh, you can follow the steps here. I tried it to write it then really detailed. So you can then do it again. So uh, as the input image is going to be our mask, which is the C1, the marker is going to be the, oh, we had to do subtraction before, sorry. We have to first subtract one image to the other, uh, yes. So to do that, we have to go to process uh, image calculator, and we have to subtract. The images that we're going to subtract is uh, image one to the boundary, which is the C1. The operation is subtract. And then the binary mask, which is the C2, is going to be subtracted. Create a new window. Yeah, yeah, OK. Yes, that's how we do it. Perfect. Now we do apply the watershed, uh, the market control watershed uh, to this one. We select it. We go to plugins as we did before. We go to MorphoLibJ. We go to segmentation, market control watershed. Yes, now it's correct. Now the input image is going to be RC1, exactly. The market is going to be the result of the subtraction. So it here it says result, as you can see. And the mask is going to be again our mask C1. Now we say OK. And we obtain this image here. Uh, remember, everything is here in the figures. You can see, I think it's the one here. Now, to obtain this beautiful image to see all segmentations, 
what we have to do is just to obtain the lookup table. Okay, so we will have a different color for its implementation. The one we can apply is uh, going to image, lookup tables. As you can see, we're doing many things uh, with PG, which I found really interesting because you can see like there are many things that you can possibly do with Fiji. It's not just training models. There are many different things. So with the lookup tables, we're going to select this one, the glass bay on dark. So we have it colored. So now we have this output image. This is this one, but this way with the watershed and the lookup table, we can see how cells are perfectly uh, segmented and we can see different color for each one. So uh, the last step that we have to do is to visualize the results on the sample input image. So we can overlay this image into this one so we can see uh, so we can see, um, yes, the overlay of our result image over the input image. To do this, we go to uh, select this one, image, overlay, add image. So the image we're going to add is the C1, the one which is watershed, this one. You see how it's written watershed at the end and the C1 with zero transparent and 50% of opacity. So we can see both images, select OK. And this is our resulting image. OK, I'm going to make it quite big. Uh, wait. Yeah. OK. OK. So as you can see, you can see here how cells are segmented and we can obtain, we see here the two image overlaid. So um, I think this uh, workflow is pretty extensive. I know it can be complicated the first time you see it if you haven't seen FitG or DBMJ. I wanted to have uh, an idea of how a workflow would look like. So once we have this, uh, this is some steps that the first time can take a lot of time, but when you know how to do it, it's really straightforward. How straightforward it is to incorporate DBMJ run in a feed script as part of a DBMJ perform all the stuff you have shown? Yes, we can do it with the, we can do this with the micros. That's what I want to tell you about now. So, um, we can automate this process that we have all done, that we, uh, in, so we don't have to repeat everything each time with the DBMJ macros. So uh, to do this, mm -mm. where was this? Uh, okay. Where's my cross? Uh, one really uh, useful thing that PG has is this. You can look for any uh, function or anything you like with the run with this. So that is how the macros look like. So when you do a step, for example, we want to do something on this image. Uh, threshold, mm, adjust, threshold, I don't know, apply. Well, the, I can do it again. Everything can be recorded through a macro. So then you can run this macro and you can uh, have this macro run all over your, all of your images. So um, you don't need to perform these on all of your images one by one. You record it with the macros. You record it over one image and then you can run it over other images. 
there are plenty of uh, tutorials where you can do this uh, in Fiji. So it's really easy. Okay. So we were doing this, I think it's probably, how could I do this? That's the output, right? And it, we're not closing. Wait. Ah, because it closes. I'm not seeing those plugins while trying to update the Fiji image J. Okay. Uh, I'm going to try to solve this. Plugins macro replica. Ah, thank you. Plugin. I was here, please. That's here. This. That's what I was looking at. Okay, so the plugins are here. Okay. It's again going to image J help update. You have to wait until it gets updated. Uh, with the bank desktop, you do not have uh, permissions to do some things, but if you have a clean installation in the bank desktop, you will. And if you have uh, your Fiji installation in your computer, you will also. So uh, that's not working maybe because of the permissions, but it's written on the guide too. Once you have installed the Fiji, you install dbmaj and morpholibj plugins in Fiji. How? You go to help, as you see, update. It takes a while to update. Once it's updated, if it's the first time you update it, it will take much more time, of course. So once it's updated, it will appear win one window. Then you click on manage update sites. You have to look for the um, for all the plugins. If you can't find one plugin, there is a bar in which you can write on it. So you write on it, dbmaj or IGPB plugin, you select it, you mark it, you close it, apply the changes, and then you have to restart it. So it's important to restart it because if you don't restart it, thank you. If you don't restart it, you won't find it. Wait. <laughs> Please. It just stopped. All right. Okay. Excuse Thank me. You. Yes. Yeah, actually, I'm trying to update it, but Dolly, Dolly, uh, drop down. The what? The, the drop down dialog box I'm seeing is just upgrade to a particular version and then OK or cancel. Yes, you, you update it. And then yes. doesn't appear for you this. Wait. I'm going to do it again so you can see. It's showing me something different from my own. Side. There's something? It's showing me something different from my own end. Mm -hmm. the, update, the update is just like an up, an upgrade, upgrading to a particular version without, those, without the menu. Are you doing it on your own computer or you're on a band desktop? I'm doing it on on my pc on my own computer. on your computer yes. have you do you have a clean installation of pg yes okay so i don't know uh this should be as easy as this i'm showing to you again i don't know what you got the error exactly so it's wait i'm going to do it here because I will have for sure. Okay. You open the the Fiji app. I have five minutes. Uh, we have five minutes. If after this, I cannot answer your questions, please write me and I'll do it. So you have to go to help update. It should sh appear there. Do you have this? Are you? being able to update it i i have it but it only shows me they are currently running a particular version so if you click okay image will quit and you will be running i it quit version. maybe it's be it quit so i don't know maybe try to have a new installation yeah, and try it again cancel, that's all. yeah so because now it should appear this this window 
Uh, it never occurred to me that it quit it. And then manage the data that I've just said, here's the list of plugins. You just look for dpmj and the other one, which is in the I. This one, you select it, apply and close, and uh, should let you apply changes again. It will need some time to do it. And then it closed. So what I said before about the macro recording, image analysis, uh, feature. Okay, so you go to plugins, macro, uh, record. And this will record all steps you do. So for example, now we go to plugins, dbmj, dbmj run. Exactly, that's what, what Daniel says on the chat. It's also on the guide. Uh, so we select our model. We run an example image. When we have it, sometime. Uh, we perform, you see, these are the steps that are being recorded with the macro. So run, the image, run, select image, sample input image, select image with the, so we're going to have this image. Now we have selected this image. And so the first step was to go to image, color, split channels. So we have these channels split it. And as you see, it's being recorded. So once you have all steps performed, you just need to save it and then run it. Uh, so for example, if you wanted to go on again, we go to image, adjust, threshold. That's what we just did uh, before. Apply, convert to a mask. So we have these, then we do the same to the other one. So do you see? how it's being recorded. And run, convert to math, run close. So you can use it again. Mm. Ah, this is what, uh, yes, something extra is that you can also export the measurements of your instance segmentation. If you go to image, once you have your uh, your resulting image. So once you have this, okay, you can go again with Fiji to plugins, MorphoLibJ, analyze, analyze regions, and you will obtain a table with all the measurements. And you can even export it as a CSV file. And with the macro sequence, you can uh, record this step and save it. So it's much easier. So we're arriving to the end of the workshop. Um, these are just all resources we've been using, models, the paper of the do, the paper of the J. I recommend you again to go and play with the bioimage model do, to play with Fiji and try to get to know it a bit. It has a lot of different tools. All of these has a, diff a lot of different utilities and you may find something that suits you and can help you on your daily basis for work. If you have further questions, uh, you can ask it to me by email. The first record the command will just open the DeepMG GUI. So I have to interrupt the script. Yes, sometimes you have to change, for example, paths or images in the macro script. Possible to really script the running in JavaScript, Python, or another scripting language? I think so, but I'm not sure how now. So you have to look at it. Remember that there is a lot of documentation of everything. Here you have the Fiji. We can ha find the wiki of everything. We can have also DBMJ. This is a DBMJ website. You can find uh, how we use it, who, who are we, which are collaborators, uh, models, tutorials. You can find um, 
all the tutorials. I think this video is being recorded so you can watch it again. You can find the wiki, which is here on how to use DBMJ and everything. So you should have all this information available. And again, if you are really struggling with something, uh, I recommend you to post in Image SC. You just have to create an account. There are different tags. So you can task any of the community partners here or any of the tools that are here. For example, you can tag Fiji, ImageJ, the BioImageJO. I think we are here to, to deep, with DeepImageJ. Uh, but you can tag whoever you want and you can tag the tool you want. There's a lot of uh, movement here. So you will get your answer really quick. Uh -uh. We're fine on my machine. Yeah. OK, so I think that's all. Uh, I hope you have kind of an idea of what is PT, Deep Image J, and Biomage Model Zoo if you never used it before. And the band desktop too. And thank you all very much for being here. Remember that you can contact me or G if you need so. And I think that's all. Thank you very much. Any short question? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. okay. So leave you with all the day that we have ahead. Uh, remember that there are a lot of other workshops that are really interesting in the I2K. Uh, one of my colleagues, uh, Wei Ouyang, is presenting at For the BioEngine, which is also part of the BioImage Model Zoo. I recommend you to have like this fall, like the big picture of it, to go to this workshop. And it's going to be, I think, really useful too. Okay. So thank you very much. Thank you, Yi. See you in yeah. another occasion. See you. Bye-bye. Okay, bye.